This is George Russell, driving his Mercedes into the side of Lewis Hamilton. And this is Adolf Hitler, driving his Mercedes into Warsaw. Both of these images are harrowing. Do you know what that word means? Harrowing? It means acutely distressing or painful, because Adolf Hitler started a world war and killed six million people. Proper knobhead. But George Russell almost took himself and Lewis Hamilton out of qualifying at the Spanish Grand Prix. And to understand why that was potentially genocidal, we have to go through the Mercedes nervous breakdown. And it starts in 2022, when they showed up for testing in Barcelona with the W13. And look at this. Side pods, as you'd expect. But then, they showed up to the second test in Bahrain with the W13, and look at this. No side pods. That's genius, they said. Whoa, the innovation. Why didn't the other teams think of that? The advantage is locked in for years. <laughs> <laughs> it was a terrible idea. Obviously, it wasn't just the side pods. It was the entire concept of the car. That W13 was shite. At the first race in Bahrain, Hamilton was almost 7 tenths off pole position, and the Milky Bar Kid was almost 1.7 seconds away. At the second race in Saudi Arabia, Hamilton got knocked out in Q1 for the first time in five years. At the next race in Australia, both of them were a second off the pace. At the next race in Imola, both of them got knocked out in Q2, which was the first time since the 2012 Japanese Grand Prix, 10 years ago, that both Mercedes failed to make it into Q3. And if that wasn't enough to give Toto Wolff an aneurysm, then, in the race, Lewis Hamilton got lapped by Max Verstappen. That was probably the most painful race of his career until the next race in Azerbaijan, because not only was the car being a pure twat through the corners, on the straight, it was bouncing so violently, it left Lewis Hamilton in a vegetative state. This is him struggling to get out of the car at the end of the race, and then walking around holding his back. Now, some people said he was faking it to get a bit of workers comp, I said that. I said that in my race reaction video last year, but to be fair, in the same video, I also said Formula One management was responsible for 9-11. And I was talking about Max Mosley getting his arse done in by a woman dressed up as a Nazi, neither of which have been proven wrong. In fact, it was proven that Max Mosley was a sodomite. He had to go to court for it. And you know what? If Max Mosley did get his arse done in by the regime, more power to him. Who the fuck are we to judge this great man for having the nerve to act out his wildest fantasy? I mean, yeah, he was wearing the stripy pyjamas. You gotta commit to the role. What was the point? The W13 was an uncompetitive death trap. And after the images of Lewis Hamilton in a vegetative state, Toto Wolff took action by demanding other people take action. He ran to the FIA and said that if they don't do something to fix the problem, he's going to go on a pumpernickel strike. So as Formula One arrived at the next race in Canada, Stefano Domenicali called an emergency meeting with the team principals so they could all sit around and watch Toto Wolff have an actual nervous breakdown. Because we are removing the state. Toto, Toto. Wait, wait a second, Toto. wait a second, I'm talking. I can tell you that all of you are playing a dangerous game. You in the shit. And I'm going to come after you. What the fuck is this? Change your fucking car. Then change, you change your car because Checo has been saying the car is fucked and no, your driver has been going out. Let's go and get him. Yeah. No, anyway, I have it. I have it printed out. He printed it out. And because of this damning evidence, the FIA introduced a technical directive. Now, I'm an idiot and I don't understand technical shite, but I'm going to try to explain it anyway. Here we go. The FIA has discovered that some cars have planks with significant deformations, like the Elephant Man. He had a significant deformation and he was publicly humiliated for it which is disgusting. I'm a human being. To combat this, several changes are planned, including specific amendments to the technical regulations which has angered Ferrari and Red Bull, two teams said to have adopted the interpretation the FIA is unhappy with. Burn local stiffness around the periphery of these three holes for a radial distance. Hold on a minute. Local stiffness around the periphery of these three holes. That's what your mom calls a good fucking night. <laughs> Right, I don't understand any of this, and neither do you, so bollocks. But what matters is, Red Bull and Ferrari were hella pissed off because this technical directive was going to hurt them and benefit Mercedes. Humpernickel intensifies. And it was coming into effect at the Belgian Grand Prix, and leading up to that race, 
Mercedes had been getting their shit together. In fact, the race before Belgium at the Hungarian Grand Prix, the Milky Bar kid got pole position. Max Verstappen did have a gearbox problem and Sergio Perez was being Sergio Perez, but still, Mercedes had closed the gap to the front and now they were about to benefit from this technical directive. Psych! It backfired massively. Whatever the fuck it did say in that technical bollocks, Mercedes went from pole position in Hungary, and when they arrived in Belgium, they were two seconds off the pace. Ah. And from that point, the W13 was unpredictable. They were 9th and 14th in Singapore, then 5th and 8th in Japan, then Lewis Hamilton finished 2nd in America, and then again at the next race in Mexico, and then at the next race in Brazil, this happened. A Mercedes 1-2, and they did did that with actual pace. So when the season ended at the next race in Abu Dhabi, Mercedes went into the winter confused. I am confusion. Because the W13 was a pure twat most of the time, but then it was capable of pole positions and a race win. So what do they do? Throw the entire concept in the bin and start again, or stick with it and try to make it work? Well, three months later, they revealed the W14. Different colour, same shite. They were sticking with the original concept. Bad move. At the first race of the season, they were 50 seconds off the lead. Now, part of that is because Adrian Newey spent the winter doing cocaine off his drawing table, and now the Red Bull is a fucking time machine. But more significantly, they were slapped by Aston Martin, who is a customer of Mercedes. They have Mercedes engines, the Mercedes gearbox, Mercedes rear suspension. It's basically a Mercedes but without regime vibes. So the real battle for Mercedes this season is to get back ahead of Aston Martin. And this was the final straw because after the first race of the season, Toto Wolff said they were gonna throw the car in the trash, gave Mike Elliott an ultimatum and ordered radical upgrades. But it's not like ordering something from Amazon where you just click a button on your phone and then it turns up on the doorstep the next day. Formula One upgrades take weeks, if not months, to arrive. And the Mercedes upgrades were scheduled for Imola two months away. So Mercedes had to hold on for the next four races and try and stay as close to Aston Martin as possible. In Saudi Arabia, Fernando finished on the podium with the two Mercedes behind him, but the Elephant Man retired, so they draw level on 38 points. At the Australian Grand Prix, Hamilton got P2, Fernando P3, Russell retired, Lance Stroll was being Lance Stroll but still got P4, so Aston Martin pulled nine points ahead. At the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Fernando finished fourth, Hamilton sixth, Osama bin Russell overtook Stroll in the pit lane, but then Stroll cooked him on the restart. So Aston Martin pull 11 points ahead of Mercedes. At the Miami Grand Prix, Fernando gets another podium, but with the Mercedes fourth and sixth and the Elephant Man down where you'd expect, the championship gap closes to six points. Then it was time for the big day in Imola, and coincidentally, the race was cancelled because of a flood. Now, I'm not saying that there's some mass conspiracy against Mercedes, but what I am saying is that in 1996, the US Air Force published a report in which they talk about weather modification. And I printed it out. Look at this. Yeah, Toto, you're not the only one with a printer. Look at this. I I have the documents. And if we turn to page... This is a real report, by the way. If we turn to page 7... Five, where the fuck's the page I need? If we turn to page 8, weather modification methods, the last bullet point... Changing the process by which clouds form and causing precip causing precipitation by using chemicals or inserting additional water into the clouds. Then, if we turn to page 10, they're talking about hurricane modification and tornado modification. Then, if we turn to page 15, where's 15? Hold on. Fuck's sake. If we turn to page 15 and 16, legal concerns, weather modification offers a unique problem when it comes to property rights. Who owns the clouds and the rain in the clouds? Excellent question. Oh, this is the juicy bit, right? This is the real kicker. Weather modification cannot be used by the military or as a weapon if it will cause widespread, long-lasting and severe effects. These limitations are open to widely ranging interpretation. So, for example, if you're a Canadian billionaire, 
who's trying to stay ahead of your rival in the Formula One World Championship. Why would you not pour chemicals into the atmosphere, causing a flood and cancelling a race, fucking up your rival's upgrade schedule? This is a real document. I will link this in the description so you can read it for yourself. Lawrence Stroll is pouring stuff into the atmosphere. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, it's perfectly reasonable to suggest that Lawrence Stroll has resorted to weather modification. What was that? And because of that, Mercedes didn't get to test the upgrades in Imola. And they didn't get to test them in Monaco because it was Monaco. So the Spanish Grand Prix would be the race where Mike Elliott finds out if his family is getting burned alive. And they are safe for now because the Mercedes upgrades slap. That's a technical term. Even though Osama bin Russell was trying to recreate 9-11 on the main straight and got himself knocked out in Q2 and lined up 12th on the grid, both Mercedes slapped both Aston Martins in the race, finished on the podium and finally move ahead of Aston Martin in the World Championship. They were still 24 seconds off the lead, but again, it was a white Christmas at the Red Bull factory. Now I would like to talk about Lance Stroll because in the last video, I gave Lance Strulovich some constructive criticism. Get Lance Stroll out of the car, put him in a room, spread some jam on a window and lock the door for Christ. Rammed up the arse by the inbred, inbred bastard. The inbred's contribution. Fatty gets knocked out in Q2 to this window licking arsehole. The entire operation is getting fucked up by the boss's son, Lance Stroll. Stroll smacks dicks with his sister. In my defense, I did back up my criticism with a research paper. But after the Spanish Grand Prix, where the elephant man outqualified Fernando Alonso after he fucked it into the gravel and then finished ahead of him in the race, the Stroll bandwagon, yes, it does exist, and they were out in full force defending him. Where are the Stroll haters now? So Lance Stroll outqualified Alonso. All the haters can shut up now, right? Where are Stroll haters now? Stroll really said fuck you to all the haters. Everything I've been saying to the Lance Stroll haters, of which there are many on on Twitter and elsewhere. They hate him because he is rich and good looking. Settle down, Craig. He's not going to shag you. You're not his sister. I'll never understand why Lance gets the hate he does, other than the fact he's an easy target, but his only crime is having a dad who loves and supports him. If I was rich and owned an F1 team, like hell I would not hire my own son if he wants to race and hold a super license. Do you know what? Bandwagon isn't right. It's more like a short bus. Let me explain something to the short boss. First of all, stop brushing your teeth with a bar of soap. It's not the same thing. Secondly, are we just going to gloss over the fact that Fernando Alonso caught up to the back of him and then volunteered not to attack? And thirdly, just because he didn't do something completely fucking stupid for one race doesn't vindicate the rest of his behaviour. That's like saying Jimmy Savile once donated a lot of money to a children's hospital. Yeah, of course he did because he was using the children's hospital as a fucking sushi restaurant. Michael Jackson ended up in the Guinness Book of World Records because of how much money he donated to charity, and he had a ranch full of children's corpses. The regime had some of the strictest laws against animal cruelty. Animal welfare in Nazi Germany. Several Nazis were environmentalists and species protection and animal welfare were significant issues in the Nazi regime. Just because somebody does one thing that isn't completely disgusting doesn't automatically make them a good person. Jimmy Savile and Michael Jackson donated millions of dollars to charity. Adolf Hitler was against animal cruelty. Lance Stroll finished ahead of Fernando Alonso at the Spanish Grand Prix. Well done. Right